what people do with jewelry, how they think of jewelry, the kind of power that they assign to jewelry, that changes and is kind of marvelous and uh, is, is different in fantastic ways from culture to culture. Jewelry, the Body Transformed, is dazzling viewers at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We did not want this to be a show that kind of took you through the history of jewelry, makers, technique, style. The idea is really that when you put on a piece of jewelry, it does something to you. The show has over 230 pieces, almost all cultivated from the Met's personal archive of about 8,000. They are divided into five different thematic groupings, all built around the overall theme of preciousness. There's a reason that jewelry is often made of gold. Gold is that perfect, incorruptible material. It, you know, it epitomizes preciousness. So that's, that is surely a theme you can see throughout. These earrings have a lot of artistic details. Tiny, tiny little balls of gold are put together to make small sculptures of animals. <laughs> when does this date back to? It's almost 2,000 years old, comes from India. In fact, the exhibition covers a span of 5,000 years. The earliest things come from ancient Mesopotamia, from the sort of royal cemeteries of Ur. But the most recently made piece is something called the Yashmak. Um, it is this uh, kind of spangled bodysuit by uh, Sean Lean. It was made especially for the Met in 2017. So it's <laughs> that one caught my eye. <laughs> That's the one that caught your eye, and it's pretty spectacular, yes. A yashmak, the name itself, refers to a kind of a garment of modesty worn by Muslim women in the Ottoman period. So I think it's very much meant to kind of evoke protection. It looks a little bit like armor. This exhibition is striking and very deliberate. Yes, we're in this grand first gallery that is meant to be a glorious display of great jewelry from around the world. These jewels cover from head to toe. Yes, they do. <laughs> They're from 1400 BC, and they would have been essential wear for an Egyptian royal wife heading into the afterlife. You can't talk about jewelry and not talk about Tiffany and Company. No, you can't. So we, there's many pieces of jewelry in the show that I think will um, sort of defy expectations. Here, we don't want to deprive you of the things that will meet your expectations. Beautiful, exquisite. Who doesn't pieces. love diamonds? Who doesn't love diamonds? Diamonds may be a girl's best friend, but Holcomb hopes both sexes see the jewelry's appeal. I had one colleague say, I, you know, I think of myself of a, as a real man's man. I wasn't expecting to like anything here, but I found some good stuff. <laughs> I want to know what your favorite is. <laughs> that is the impossible question. It changes every day, every day. One piece that you might not even notice, but is in many ways to me one of the most kind of moving um, pieces in the whole show, is a floral collar from ancient Egypt. It's about 4,000 years old. But this is actually a piece made of flowers, and it belonged to probably the most famous Egyptian pharaoh, King Tutankhamun. <laughs> it was part of the rituals surrounding his death. What are you hoping people will take away from the exhibition? I think when you make your way through the exhibition, you, you learn about this, these stories, you read uh, about these places. I think and hope you'll come away understanding that adorning ourselves is one of the most 
profound things we do as human beings.